Hello, thank you for joining with me for section 3 of chapter 9. We are on day 130 and this is the correction of error. Chapter 9 is titled The Plan of Forgiveness. If you will please close your eyes and join me in prayer. Dear Father, please enable me to set aside everything I think I know about this reading, about A Course in Miracles, about you, about myself, and about others, God, please allow me to have an open mind and a new experience. Please give me your vision. Thank you, God. Amen. Okay, so section three, the correction of error. The alertness of the ego to the errors which other egos make is not the kind of vigilance in which the Holy Spirit would have you maintain. Egos are critical in terms of the kind of sense they stand for. They understand this kind of sense because it is sensible to them. To the Holy Spirit, it makes no sense at all. To the ego, it is kind and right and good to point out errors and correct them. This makes perfect sense to the ego, which is totally unaware of what errors are and what correction is. Errors are the ego, and correction of errors of any kind lies solely in the relinquishment of the ego. When you correct a brother, you are telling him he is wrong. He may be making no sense at the time, and it is certain that if he is speaking from the ego, he will be making no sense. But your task is still to tell him he is right. You do not tell him this verbally if he is speaking foolishly because he needs correction at another level, since his error is at another level. He is still right because he is a son of God. His ego is always wrong no matter what it says or does. If you point out the errors of his ego, you must be seeing him through yours because the Holy Spirit does not perceive his errors. This must be true if there is no communication at all between this ego and the Holy Spirit. Footnote 10. Chapter 9, Section 1. The ego cannot ask the Holy Spirit for anything because there is complete communication failure between them. The ego makes no sense, and the Holy Spirit does not attempt to understand anything that arises from it. Since he does not understand it, he does not judge it, knowing that nothing it engenders means anything. When you react at all to errors, you are not listening to the Holy Spirit. He has merely disregarded them. And if you attend to them, you are not hearing him. If you do not hear him, you are listening to your ego and making as little sense as the brother whose errors you perceive. This cannot be correction, but it is more than merely lack of correction for him. It is the giving up of correction in yourself. When a brother behaves insanely, you can heal him only by perceiving the sanity in him. If you perceive his errors and accept them, you are accepting yours. Footnote 11. Accept them means accepting his errors as real, as Jesus says two paragraphs later. If you want to give yours over to the Holy Spirit, you must do this with his. Unless this becomes the one way in which you handle all errors, you cannot understand how all errors are undone. How is this different from telling you that what you teach you learn? Your brother is as right as you are, and if you think he is wrong, you are condemning yourself. You cannot correct yourself. It is possible then, is it possible then, for you to correct another? But you can see him truly because it is possible for you to see yourself truly. It is not up to you to change him, but merely to accept him as he is. His errors do not come from the truth that is in him, and only this truth is yours. His errors cannot change this and can have no effect at all on the truth in you. To perceive errors in anyone and to react to them as if they were real is to make them real to you. 
You will not escape paying the price for this, not because you are being punished for it, but because you are following the wrong guide and will lose your way. Your brother's errors are not of him any more than yours are of you. Accept his errors as real and you have attacked yourself. If you would find your way and keep it, see only truth beside you, for you walk together. The Holy Spirit in you forgives all things in you and your brother. His errors are forgiving with yours. Atonement is no more separate than love. It cannot be separate because it comes from love. Any attempt you make to correct a brother means that you believe correction by you is possible, and this can only be the arrogance of the ego. Correction is of God who does not know of arrogance. The Holy Spirit forgives everything because God created everything. Do not undertake his function or you will forget yours. Accept only the function of healing in time because that is what time is for. God gave you the function to create in eternity. You do not need to learn this, but you do need to learn to want this, for this all learning was made. This is the Holy Spirit's good use of an ability which you do not now need, but which you have made. Footnote 12, the ability is learning. The Holy, Spirit's, the Holy Spirit's positive use of this ability is for us to learn to want our function of creating in heaven. We do this, as the rest of the paragraph says, by learning to see everything in the world without condemnation and thus to see ourselves without condemnation. You do, I'm going to repeat the sentence above because I got a little confused. You do not need to learn this, but you do need to learn to want this. For this, all learning was made. This is the Holy Spirit's good use of an ability which you do not need, but which you have made. Give it to Him. You do not know how to use it. He will teach you how to see yourself without condemnation by learning how to look on everything without it. Condemnation will then not be real to you and all your errors will be forgiven. I will go ahead and read Robert Perry's notes on this section. Day 130, The Correction of Error. This is such a powerful section full of great one-liners. Yet it always throws me into confusion because the impression it gives me is that I can never correct anyone for any reason. And that just doesn't seem right. Yeah, as a manager, that's, that can't happen. My older daughter used to dart off erratically in parking lots. If I never corrected her, I'm not sure she would be alive now. So today I decided I'm not going to worry about those issues. There is a very obvious dynamic that this section is talking about, and I'm going to focus on that. The dynamic is that our ego has fixed rules about what behaviors make sense, and we are on the lookout for when those rules are violated. I'm going to repeat that sentence. The dynamic is that our ego has fixed rules about what behaviors make sense and we are on the lookout for when those rules are violated. When we notice a violation, it seems like a violation of us, so we point it out to the other person and correct it in the hopes that she will now be a better person and the violation won't happen again. We all know this situation. I'm tempted to give examples, but do I really need to? The examples fill our lives. The problem with this scenario is that it's entirely an interaction of egos. My ego with its correct rules is setting straight your ego and it's rule breaking. So I'm identifying me with my ego and you with yours. By seeing a reality that consists of nothing but jostling egos, I've lost my way. 
For the fact is that all errors are not the breaking of the ego's rules. Rather, errors are the ego. What Jesus is asking instead is for us to basically overlook this whole level of things. Rather than asking, is their ego making sense right now, we need to be thinking everything their ego does is meaningless. None of it makes any sense. We therefore shouldn't try to understand it, shouldn't judge it, shouldn't react to it, shouldn't even attend to it. None of it's real. None of it can hurt the truth in us. And so we just disregard it all. Why? Because our brother's errors do not come from the truth in him. And this comes off the last section we read yesterday. In a very real sense, his errors are not of him, meaning they don't really come from him, from his real nature, that perfect light inside that we, that's all that's there, covered by the body. And therefore are not reflective of him. They come from his ego. So rather than pointing out errors to him and correcting them, we should give his errors over the, to the Holy Spirit. As the text will later point out, correction is his job, not ours. Have you ever done this? Have you ever given someone else's errors over to the Holy Spirit? As we disregard what their egos are doing, our focus then needs to transfer to a completely different place. When our brother behaves insanely, we need to see the sanity in him. We need to accept him as he truly is. No matter how wrong his behavior may be, we need to silently tell him that he is right because he is a son of God. This is where our focus needs to go. The odd thing is that this will actually bring about more and better change on the behavioral level and will generally do it faster, for this will heal him. It's not our job to change him, but it is our job to heal him by taking our fingers off his errant hands and just stepping back and loving him for who he really is. Have you noticed that you can spend years trying to change someone and then one moment of unconditional love can do more than you've accomplished in all that time? What I see in this section is that it's asking me to switch modes. Am I trying to change people through my ego taking a wrench to their loose screws? Or am I trying to heal them by stepping back, overlooking their errors, and seeing only their underlying sanity? So I don't have to worry right now about what the limits of this are, how absolute this principle is. I've got enough to deal with in just making this basic shift of modes. Thank you for joining with me for day three. Thank you for joining with me. Thank you for joining with me. Day 130, Section 3, The Correction of Error. Switching the modes. I love you.